Hello dears. Today we'll be discussing one of the important topics of the paper History of English Language and the topic is word formation also known as the growth of vocabulary. Before we discuss the topic word formation let us try to define what language is. Language is often defined as the method of human communication. It can be either in the written format or spoken format with the use of words in a structured and conventional way. That means every language has a system. It is a structured system of communication. And the study of language is known as linguistics. That leads us to another question. What is a word? A word is often defined as a single distinct meaningful element of speech or writing and sometimes the words should be used with other words or it can even stand alone to form a sentence in order to convey an idea. Then coming to the topic word formation, chiefly there are two ways how new words are added to the vocabulary. One is borrowing words from foreign languages. For example, after the Norman conquest in 1066, French words were added into English. So automatically, the vocabulary of English got enriched. And the second way is the formation, the creation of new words according to the need, according to the changing context, humans, form new words. So these are the two ways for the increase of vocabulary. Borrowing words from foreign languages and the formation of new words. Hope you know this man, none other than Dr. Samuel Johnson. He was a poet, essayist, literary critic, biographer, editor, and also a lexicographer. And this was the first dictionary ever published. The dictionary was published in 1755 and it had 40,000 words. But what about the present condition? One of the most popular dictionaries of the modern world is the Oxford Dictionary of English. And in this dictionary, now we have lakhs and lakhs of words with numerous additions every time. Coming to the different processes of word formation, I think chiefly there are 15 processes and I wish to discuss those processes with you in this video presentation. The major processes of word formation include compounding, also known as composition. The second one is affixation, also referred to as derivation. The third is shortening sometimes known as clipping or abbreviations. The fourth one is acronymy, words which are created from initials. Then old words put into new use. The next one is autonomasia, words derived from names. Syncopation, telescoping, meta-analysis, portmanteau words, back formation, deliberate coinages, imitation also known as onomatopoeia, false etymology and the last one is slang terms. These are the major processes of word formation. So we'll start from the first one which is compounding otherwise known as composition. I think this picture illustrates the concept of compounding. Two words are combined to form a new word. For example, butter and fly. And we have the new word butterfly. So to define compounding, it is nothing but the combination of two words to produce a new word or meaning. And remember, the compound word expresses its meaning from that of any of its components. For example, See this, 
The first one is an image of a class, the Gurukula system, which was there in ancient India. And the second is maybe a room. When we combine these two words, now we have a new word that is classroom. Class plus room. It's a classroom. And these are the other examples. In English, there are different types of compounding. For example, when two nouns are combined, words like a word, a railway, bookcase, waterproof are examples of such combinations. Another example is uh, the combination of adjective and the noun. Blackbird, hotbed, tablecloth, colorblind are such examples. The third type of compounding is noun plus adjective. See the word grass green. Then verb plus noun. Pickpocket is an example of verb noun combination. Then verb plus adverb, examples like runaway, makeup, knockout, adverb and verb, the word is outlive. Then the greatest contributor to English language, none other than William Shakespeare. Phrases like the heaven kissing hill in Hamlet, Spencer with his silver dropping tears is another example of compounding. Coming to the second one, which is affixation, also known as derivation. New words are again formed by adding suffixes or prefixes to the root of the word. And this process started from right from the Anglo-Saxon uh, times. And many suffixes are from French language. For example, the suffix D-O-M. Examples are freedom, kingdom. Another one is ship, worship, friendship, less careless, useless, M-E-S-S, loneliness, kindness, ism. Examples are socialism, Marxism, fascism, M-E-N-D, government, movement, etc. Then the usage of prefixes like pre, post, super, inter, etc. International, extraordinary are such examples. The third process of word formation is shortening, which is also known as clipping or the use of abbreviations. The humans always seek for comfort and ease and communication also in communication also people try to use this the long words and phrases are reduced to promote quick utterances for example the word photograph has been clipped to photo laboratory becomes lab and examination becomes exam the fourth process of word formation is acronymy or words which are formed from initials. In this category, one can see the free use of initials and a long and a frequent phrase is represented by the initial letters of each word in the phrase. See the example, the word UNICEF, which is actually the short form of United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund. So this is acronymy. Another example is uh, UGC, University Grants Commission. NET, National Eligibility Test. JRF, Junior Research Fellowship. SLET, State Level Eligibility Test. The other examples are the word Pluto, MP, MLA. B A M A etc. So this is acronymy. The next process is also known as the old words put into new use. For example, words with certain meaning undergoes a change as the time changes. 
and the word evolves new possible meanings. For example, pedant, during the time of Shakespeare, it simply meant a schoolmaster. But what is the current meaning of the word pedant? Pedant means a person who shows off his learning. So just think how the meaning has changed from a schoolmaster to a person who shows his learning. Another example is literary. At the time of Dr. Johnson, the word literary meant something related to alphabet. But now the word has achieved another dimension. Anything related, connected to literature is known as literary. See the examples, the board. Now we have a blackboard, a whiteboard, food on board, board meeting. The second example is box. Once again, the meaning has changed. A plastic box, box office, pencil box, a steel box, a wooden box. So different meanings have entered as time changed. The other examples are brush. No, it is used as to brush. Smoking. Let's have a smoke. These are such examples. The next process of word formation is known as autonomasia, which means the words which are derived from names. In the case of certain words, the origin is related to the names and the titles. For example, have a look at this picture. It is the picture of Mary Magdalene, the female disciple of Jesus Christ. From her name, the word Maudlin was derived. Magdalene is a biblical character who is always presented as sentimental or over-emotional. So from her character, the word Maudlin was derived. Another example is the word Sandwich. The word is named after John Montagu, the fourth Earl of Sandwich. He always loved playing cards and never wanted to take a break from the game. Therefore, he ordered his servants to bring him meat tucked between two pieces of bread. Gradually, other people also started to order the same as sandwich. Thus came the word sandwich from the name the Earl of Sandwich. Another example is the word boycott. There was once a captain named Boycott, an English agent for the Irish estates. One day, the tenants organized a strike. And from that day onwards, Boycott was connected with spike and other such activities. Another example is the word Utopia, which is actually the title of a novel written by Thomas Moore. And Utopia means a thing which is tough to be implemented. Romeo is another example of autonomasia. The next process of word formation is known as syncopation. It means the elision of vowels or consonants in rapid speech resulting in the formation of new terms. So when we speak in a fast manner, there is a tendency to drop certain vowels or consonants. For example, the word perambulator later became perambulator and now we use it as pram. The next process of word formation is telescoping, which means the it is an extension of compounding, where two or more words are combined to form a new word, but there is one change. This happens with the elision of a few sounds. For example, when we say to do on in a fast manner, it becomes to do on. And the second one is to do off, to doff. So a few sounds are elided and that is telescoping. The next process of word formation is known as metanalysis. 
it is an extended form of telescoping. It also means a reanalysis. In this case, the consonant at the end of the word gets attached to the vowel at the beginning of the next word. So, through the process of reanalysis, a new combination is formed. At times, this happens due to careless pronunciation also. For example, the word nickname. It was originally ik name. Ik is an old word and it meant meme. So, ik name meant meme, that is a name given to a person in addition to the real name. In course of time, the final N of an got attached to the vowel of the following word. Thus, a nickname was evolved from an nickname. At times, the process works in the reverse order also. That is, the article A takes as N from the noun that follows. For example, an apron from a napron. Another example is an umpire from a numpire. The next process is known as portmanteau words, sometimes also referred to as blending, where two words are combined, blended together to produce another word. A word which is created as the result of blending the meaning of two different words. That means a part of one word is attached to the part of another word. And remember, the new word carries the meaning of both the words. For example, when we combine smoke and fog, we get the word smog. Another example of portmanteau word is melodrama, which is a combination of mellows and drama. Then motel, which is the combination of motor and hotel. Tragic comedy, which is the combination of tragedy and comedy. And these are the examples of portmanteau words. The next process of word formation is known as back formation in which the English words with false appearances occur. So if affixation means forming a word by adding an affix, back formation is actually the reverse of it. It is the process by which a new word is created by removing the supposed affix from an already existing word. That means the new words are formed by removing the supposed affixes. For example, the original word is actually greedy, but we derived a new word, greed, from that. Another example is gloomy, but now we also have gloom as another word. The next process is deliberate coinages. That means new words are created with the growth of civilization and also according to the needs of the society. That means the new words replace the older ones. For example, once it was flying machine, but now it is not known as flying machine, it is known as airplane. Then imitation. This is one of the important processes of word formation, also known as onomatopoeia. It is the oldest method of word formation and it is there in all languages. A word that imitates or suggests the source of the sound that it describes. Flash, cuckoo, etc. are such words. You can see the examples. Even the combination of certain vowels are also suggestive. For example, the combination of F and L. It suggests Quickness, 
See the examples, words like flash, flicker, flame, flight, flow, flu. Then the combination of ST, which suggests stability or a kind of a stoppage. Still, stop, stay, stationary. And the third one is BL, which connects you to the moment of the mouth and the passage of air. Blow, blue. So these are examples. And uh, the next one is false etymology. New words which are formed through mistaken notions regarding their etymology. People mistake while they search for the etymology. For example, many believe that the, the word island came from the French word isle. But it is not like that. It was the Anglo-Saxon England which became island after 1546. And another popular mistaken notion is about the word picnic. Many believe that it came, uh, it is an abbreviation of picnicker. It is not like that. Then another example is buck to mean dollar. But it is actually the uh, short form of buckskin. And the popular one is woman. And many believe that it is from uh, the concept woven from man. But it came from the old English word with man. Then the last portion, the use of slang terms. The word slang was first used in 1756. And slang means the use of informal words and expressions, which are not considered standard in the speaker's language. Once it was believed that slang was used by thieves, smugglers, and the underworld people. And it was never accepted by the society until the 18th century. Words like chap, which means a dealer in stolen goods, kidnapping, pinch, shabby, etc. are such slang terms. But now we have accepted even the slang terms in our language. So to conclude, these are the different processes of word formation once again for you. I hope uh, you have an idea about all the processes now. I just want to have a recap. The main processes are compounding or composition, where two words are combined to form a new word. Affixation by adding suffixes and prefixes, new words are formed. Shortening, clipping, abbreviations is another process of word formation where the words are shortened to form new words. Acronymy, words which are derived from the initials. Next is the old words achieving new meaning according to the changing times. Words which are derived from names also or it is known as autonomasia. Next one is incubation, telescoping, meta-analysis, portmanteau words, Back formation, deliberate coinages, imitation, also known as onomatopoeia, false etymology, slang terms. So these are the different processes of word formation. I hope you have understood the concept of word formation, otherwise known as the growth of vocabulary. Thank you. See you again.